I'm not a scout, I'm not a draft expert, and I'm not a mock draft guy. Don't get me wrong, I have nothing against people who get caught up in the craze of predicting which players go where based on highlight reels and secondary sources. If it fills their utility and view count, mock me where I stand. I'm of the mindset that if I haven't seen a player participate in at least a few full games that I can't make a fair assessment that holds weight. Being a college student with a limited time frame to watch hockey outside the NHL, it's difficult for me to be truly honest with people in forming an opinion on prospects. For me, the more interesting aspect of this process is the concept. You've got 31 different franchises trying to beat each other on the ice gathered under one roof in the most passive-aggressive environment something the NHL is very familiar with on various topics. You've got a summit of white men aged from Cheka to Lamorello and their scouting trees of amateur, pro, and European henchmen. Together, they conjure up plans for league domination at a UN table that can make or break a team's relevance for years to come. You've got hopes and dreams of fans and businesses that are pinned on kids as young as 17 like some bad parents. If a general manager breathes in the direction of another table, you've got insiders tweeting about contact igniting speculation based on hearsay the psychologically healthy activity that we all engage in online. You've got the traditional booing of the condescending businessman, which he encourages now because who the hell's gonna stop him? The trades, the rumors, the lack of clarity, the lack of consensus, the groupthink, the organizational philosophy, the on-the-clock time management, and somewhere in there, the actual picks turn to life-changing moments. It's downright controlled chaos, which makes it a landmark event on the league calendar each year due to the unpredictability of it all. So what can we expect from this year's show? Well... The Buffalo Sabres will take their first step towards not being the biggest disaster of the bunch, a title proudly taken by the Ottawa Senators last week. Jason Botterill's over under time of the announcement of the pick beats Tim Murray by 8.5 middle seconds, despite the fact that they have the number one pick. Carolina Hurricanes owner Tom Dundon will make the pick on behalf of the Tom Dundon organization, run onto the stage, and announce the Jeff Skinner trade instead of the pick because they do things differently in Carolina now. The Montreal Canadiens will draft a center and trade for one because it's not like they had a capable one to begin with before the holy crust got in the way. The Ottawa Senators! Nope. The Arizona Coyotes will actually allow Alex Galchenyuk to play his natural position and without media pressure he'll thrive. Oh, and they'll trade their pick to the Calgary Flames for Dougie Hamilton to reunite with his brother Freddie because I love me a good chaotic reunion. The Flames, upon trading for the selection, draft a defenseman to beat a tired cliché into the ground and subsequently announce an intention to sign Eddie Lack. Bill Peters storms off the stage. The Detroit Red Wings will make a selection that they will try to justify to their fan base, but they'll fail in doing so. Unless... The Vancouver Canucks should have Daniel and Henrik announce the pick because God do I want Trevor Linden to be happy for once. They should take a defenseman because... Jesus Christ, <laughs> no. The Chicago Blackhawks will get out of Marion Hosa's contract and trade their pick to add Justin Falk because they will keep getting away with it, Jesse. Deal with it. In the middle of the New York Rangers' first selection, assistant coach Lindy Ruff will sneak onto the catwalk at the American Airlines Arena and set fire to the Dallas Stars' 1999 Stanley Cup banner. The Flames will spell out, No goal! The Edmonton Oilers will take the perfect winger to play alongside Connor McDavid only to trade him before the end of the night for a more culturally acceptable player. The New York Islanders will have Matt Barzell announce both picks back to back while staring down Don Sweeney the entire time. Lamorello should also say a few words reminding John Tavares that home is where the phone and money are. The Dallas Stars will have Tyler Sagan and Jamie Benn soberly announce the pick, but everything goes terribly wrong when Sagan's Twitter password is displayed on the screen by a savvy hacker. The Philadelphia Flyers will trade both of their picks for Jake Muzzin and offer sheet Mark Stone is what I would have said if Paul Holmgren was still the GM. Ron Hextall will do the sensible thing and trade one of his picks and defensive prospects for Jeff Skinner, who will fittingly join the former team of Superintendent James Chalmers. The Florida Panthers will make an apology to Gerard Gallant on behalf of Exit Plans Everywhere by offering a DVD copy of The Florida Project starring Willem Dafoe. The camera will cut to Gallant, blowing a cigar cloud in the air before responding. Misery, 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 that's what you've chosen. I offered you friendship, and you spat in my face. The Colorado Avalanche will have the joy of painting play in the background as Joe Sackick announces the pick, because it served as the film score of the Matt Duchesne saga in his head. The New Jersey Devils will have Patrick Warburton announce their selection. Martin Berger then steps on the stage to engage in a battle of the car rental commercial spokesmen in their midlife crises. The Columbus Blue Jackets president of hockey operations John Davidson will exclaim, <laughs> before announcing a trade for Jake Muzzin, because it's always sunny in LA. The Los Angeles Kings will have team mascot Eric Cartman announce the pick as he says some very undemocratic things to the other teams in attendance. Especially the Avalanche, Kyle's favorite squad. Sales of the fractured but whole skyrocket, but only for the Nintendo Switch. The San Jose Sharks will trade down to acquire a couple picks, and you suddenly remember that Yannick Hansen was a member of the team for the past one and a half seasons. The Anaheim Ducks will be late arriving to the podium. 
They'll make up for it by getting out booed by Batman, a healthier alternative to getting out shot. Well, Randy Carlyle is good for something, I guess. The Minnesota Wild reveal big time rush, and they acapella the pick because let's face it, the NHL would do the same thing for an outdoor game if they were still a band. Toronto Maple Leafs GM Kyle Dubas will make a smart decision because he's made many of them thus far and will continue to do so in the future because he's a young intellectual that will make this game fun. The St. Louis Blues will make their pick despite heavy verbal abuse coming from the Pittsburgh Penguins table and general manager Jim Rutherford, who demands they pick up the phone and finish the Chris Thorburn trade. The Washington Capitals will try to make this election, but Alex Ovechkin comes out from behind the stage and does 31 more bench presses of the cup before drunkenly announcing Philip Pritchard as their draft pick. The Penguins, Boston Bruins, Nashville Predators, Tampa Bay Lightning, Winnipeg Jets, and Vegas Golden Knights don't pick in the first round because they all don't need to. I mean, face it, they all don't. Hey, George, you had three picks last year and you're exempt from the Seattle expansion draft. Sit your Stanley Cup finalist ass down. Overall, this will be a pretty active draft that will yield tremendous results if you studied Goldman's chaos theory, like myself. May your favorite team make the right selection to you and the wrong selection to everyone else so we can all be scouts for a week insulting each other's intellect over teenagers that are years away from playing a game. I will leave you with three simple requests. Enjoy the chaos, let your reactions ruminate, and draft Quinn Hughes, you son of a bitch.